Now that the Dragon Age anime is out on Netflix, it slaps, by the way, I decided to dive back into Bioware's last Dragon Age game, which came out all the way back in 2014. In this video, I'm going to review Dragon Age Inquisition and let you know whether it's worth your time today. We'll dive deep into the gameplay, characters, romance, questing, and even touch on the DLC. This review will be mostly spoiler free, aside from a brief talk about choices, which I'll mark with a spoiler warning. So buckle up, grab some iced coffee, and let's talk about Dragon Age Inquisition. What's up everyone, Big Dan here. I make videos about RPGs and action games. So if you enjoy this video, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to Big Dan Gaming. Without further ado, let's dive right in. While Elden Ring and Bill Clinton cleaned up at the most recent Game Awards, back in 2014, Game of the Year went to Dragon Age Inquisition. Critics and gamers alike were dazzled by this ambitious semi-open world epic fantasy RPG with top-notch characters, cinematic cutscenes, and fluid action strategy combat. But as time has gone on, Inquisition has received a bit more criticism for its flaws. What flaws, you might be thinking? Well, there's the level gating, excessive fetch quests and busy work, and a departure from some of the role-playing elements that people enjoyed from the first game in the series, Dragon Age Origins. But while Inquisition might not have the same staying power as a game like Skyrim or The Witcher 3, it's still an incredibly enjoyable experience to be had. If you ask me what my favorite Dragon Age game is, I would probably give you the most diplomatic and correct, as determined by the internet, opinion, Dragon Age Origins. But numbers don't lie, and if my Steam playtime count betrays my preferences, then I guess I'm an Inquisition stan. Despite a trimming down on some of the more robust RPG elements from Origins, Inquisition has more enjoyable gameplay for my tastes. So let's dive into the gameplay, shall we? For newcomers to the Dragon Age franchise, Inquisition provides the most casual-friendly introduction to real-time with pause combat. The combat in DAI feels more like Skyrim than OG Baldur's Gate, which wasn't the case with Origins. And while I still think these games are best enjoyed chronologically, I could forgive you if you chose to dive into Inquisition first before trying Origins and DA2. I often hear from my viewers that they tried to play Dragon Age Origins, usually after falling in love with Bioware's better half, Mass Effect, but they just couldn't get into the combat and ended up quitting. And to those folks, I'd say, give Dragon Age Inquisition a shot if you haven't already. For combat encounters, you'll have a team of up to four members, your main character, the so-called Herald of Andraste, plus three companions. Inquisition sports a deep roster of companions with nine characters to choose from, evenly divided from the game's main combat classes, mages, rogues, and warriors. This is the most companion characters in a Dragon Age game to date. Combat is centered on a mix of auto attacks, abilities, and consumable items like potions and bombs. You can swap between any of your four party members at any time, and even pause the action to queue up different abilities if you so choose. If you've played Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, Baldur's Gate, or newer titles like Pathfinder Kingmaker, then this will feel really familiar to you. If you want to deal more damage and be really effective in combat, then you'll want to focus on ability combos. For example, if you use Frost Step followed by Winter's Grasp with the Winter's Ruin upgrade, you'll receive a 1000% damage bonus. That's massive! Or if you've got a Templar, you can use Spell Purge followed by Wrath of Heaven for massive AoE damage that also stuns your opponents. My two favorite builds that I've made over my many playthroughs of this game are a Sword and Shield Templar Dwarf Tank and a Rift Mage with lots of fire and frost magic. I am really sad that Dragon Age Inquisition doesn't have an option for blood magic though. Hopefully Bioware will bring back that specialization in Dragon Age Dreadwolf because it's absolutely perfect for evil playthroughs. Plus, Tevinter is the perfect setting for blood magic. At the beginning of the game, you'll customize your character, choosing both your race, gender, and combat class. The character creator is pretty good, with lots of sliders to make your herald look basically the way you want. But there are a distinct lack of hairstyle options, which seems to be a running trend in RPGs. 
It's funny to me that these types of games always seem to have more options for face tattoos than decent haircuts. But I digress. About halfway through the game, you'll choose a combat specialization for your class. If you don't know what class you want to build, the good news is that each of your companions sports one of these specializations so you can build and experiment with them all before locking in your main character if you so choose. I've grown to enjoy the Knight Enchanter playstyle after building Vivienne on my most recent playthrough. But aside from choosing your character's build and background, you'll also make a number of big choices during the main story and some side quests in Dragon Age Inquisition. While your options are not quite as far-reaching or extreme as Dragon Age Origins, there are a number of decisions that can significantly shift the story. We will veer into some spoiler territory here, by the way, so skip to this timestamp if you want to avoid spoilers. The first choices you make will start in Dragon Age Keep, a standalone website where you can record the choices you made in Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age 2. I really like the concept of the Keep, it allows players to keep track of their own journey through the franchise while also accurately logging those experiences in Dragon Age Inquisition. And some of those choices will significantly impact the plot, such as your decisions surrounding Alistair, Loghain, and Morrigan from Origins. Most other choices will just net you some unique dialogue that recall events from the previous two games. During the game itself, whenever you're about to make a big choice, Bioware tells you some of the immediate consequences explicitly in the dialogue box. I have mixed feelings about this design choice. On the one hand, this takes some of the mystery out of your choices. One of the most exciting things about making choices in RPGs are those moments where you linger on a big decision because you're not sure how things will pan out. On the other hand, sometimes RPGs will saddle you with big decisions that you don't even realize you're making, leaving you unpleasantly surprised when a seemingly minor dialogue option comes back to bite you in the ass later. That being said, Dragon Age Inquisition does have some tricks up its sleeve, and you still may be surprised by the consequences of your actions from time to time. For instance, on my first playthrough, I was surprised by the Iron Bull's betrayal during the Trespasser DLC after I failed to save the Chargers during his personal quest in the base game. I figured it was more important to preserve an alliance with the Kunari, but that came back to haunt me. Aside from quest choices, you'll also oversee the day-to-day -day operations of the Inquisition from your War Table and Throne. War Table operations are these brief text adventures that are time-gated with a real-world clock. If you don't like this feature, there are mods that will remove the time-gating to make your operations autocomplete. War Table operations will net you resources and in some cases open up new quests. Throne judgments are really fun. Basically, you get to decide the fate of various criminals and near-do-wells that you come across during the story. Inquisition does a good job of making the player feel powerful and like they are truly in charge of a major organization. As opposed to games like Skyrim, where you become the head of a guild and then still get sent out on some BS fetch quests or busy work. Your allies and advisors in Inquisition all defer to your judgment, though some may be angry with the choices you end up making. But you won't spend all your time in a castle. You will have to go out and do some quests at some point, which gives you an opportunity to explore Inquisition's massive game world. Inquisition is not a true open world game since its zones are separate maps, but each zone is incredibly open and expansive, sometimes a little too expansive. I'm looking at you, hissing wastes. Thanks to the much-aligned Frostbite engine, Inquisition's environments are teeming with beauty and color. For all the problems Bioware has had with the Frostbite engine, it sure can produce some gorgeous scenery, even if its character models look a little plasticky and overly shiny. But after a while, traversing the landscapes in Inquisition can get a bit boring. There's really not much to do except pick up quests, loot crafting materials, and fight baddies. There are a few minor activities like finding shards and solving astrarium puzzles, but other than that, the open world is pretty much just fetch quest city. Which brings me to the topic of level gating and the power system in Dragon Age Inquisition. Anytime you complete quests in this game, you'll earn a resource called power. 
you can spend power to unlock new regions, and most importantly, new main quests in the game. On paper, this is meant to simulate the growing power of the Inquisition, since your advisors will remind you at certain points that your little group isn't yet influential enough to parlay with more powerful people, such as the Empress of Warlay or the leader of the Mage Rebellion. This system is really annoying because, unsurprisingly, you will not earn enough power from main quests alone to continue straight through the story, meaning you will have to grind some side content to progress through the main story. This is where the whole meme came together about being trapped in the Hinterlands, which is one of the first zones you unlock in the game. Because the Hinterlands is precisely where you hit your first power gate and be forced into grinding menial side content such as hunting rams or collecting potions for an asthmatic elf. My theory is that Bioware put this system in the game to disguise the fact that Dragon Age Inquisition's main questline is only about 12 hours long. Realistically, you'll have to spend at least 20 hours to finish it, though, because of all the artificial gating. They did develop this game in a little over two years after all, and about half that time was just spent trying to get the Frostbite engine working to suit their needs. That being said, there is still a ton of content in Dragon Age Inquisition, and one of the reasons the main story is so short is because they spent a lot of time developing side quests and major conversations for your nine companions and three advisors including additional romance arcs for eight of those characters, each with multiple cutscenes, dialogue options, etc. Not to mention over five hours of unique ambient party dialogue, which randomly triggers while you're exploring. In many ways, Dragon Age Inquisition is peak Bioware in terms of its writing for characters and romance. It's still not quite as good as Mass Effect in my opinion, but it's among the best work the studio has ever done. Not all the characters are S-tier, but a lot more of them than you would expect meet this criteria, with my favorites being Varric, Iron Bull, Dorian, Cassandra, and Josephine. In particular, Cassandra is one of the deepest and most interesting characters that Bioware has written so far. And then, of course, there is Solus, which brings me to the DLC. Before we talk about the phenomenal Trespasser DLC, let's briefly discuss the first two expansions for Dragon Age Inquisition. Jaws of Hakon opens up a new region of the map and explores the history of the tribal Avar people, as well as the original Inquisition and its leader, Ameridin. At first, I felt like this expansion was pretty mid, but it's grown on me over my most recent playthrough. I still don't feel like it's a can't-miss experience by any means, but the questline is interesting, and there are some pretty epic fights at the end of the DLC that are worth experiencing at least once. The Descent sees us returning to the Deep Roads once again to explore an ancient mystery and some unexplained earthquakes in the Dwarven Lyrium Mines. David Hayter, voice of Solid Snake, makes a cameo appearance, and if you play as a dwarf, you'll get a bunch of unique dialogue options. There are a few difficulty spikes with the combat, including an awkwardly designed final boss fight with some Flora's Lava type mechanics. Overall, the descent is enjoyable, but if you're short on time, you can safely skip it. The real treasure of Dragon Age Inquisition is the Trespasser DLC, which solves some unanswered questions from the epilogue of the base game and helps set up the plot for Dragon Age Dreadwolf. If you want to avoid more spoilers, then skip to the conclusion now, and also probably skip all of the trailers that Bioware has put out for the next game. So yeah, our boy Solus turns out to be Fen Harel, and he wants to destroy the world in order to bring his people back. The way that Bioware set up this villain character and put him as one of your companions in the base game, then seeded minor hints throughout the game, but not so many hints that you could just outright figure it out, it's honestly compelling writing. I truly think if Bioware can nail the story in Dragon Age Dreadwolf, that Solus has the potential to be the greatest villain character in video game history. He's certainly got a more interesting backstory than your typical evil for the sake of evil villain trope we see all too often in video games. Bioware has always been a cut above with its villains, with their complicated motives like Saren, Loghain, the Elusive Man, and now Solus. Trespasser skips ahead to two years after the events of the base game, so it's a point of no return for your save file. Once you start this DLC, you can't go back and complete any other quests or expansions, so it's always the capstone experience of your journey. You travel to the Winter Palace to discuss the future of the Inquisition, and uncover a Kanuari plot along the way, which eventually leads to you to discover Solus's secret. 
This expansion is just top tier. The combat encounters are really great, the music is epic, there are lots of nice hangout moments and scenes with your favorite companions, and the plotline with Solus is really compelling. If you're going to play any expansion in Inquisition, then Trespasser is the one to pick, and it sits among my all-time favorite DLC. So at the end of the day, should you play Dragon Age Inquisition in 2023? Yes, it's a great game. It's definitely got some flaws, which I've outlined extensively in this video, but the pros far outweigh the cons. And if you enjoy fantasy RPGs, then Inquisition is definitely worth your time. So there you have it, my review of Dragon Age Inquisition for 2023. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more RPG videos and reviews. If you want to support this channel even further, consider becoming a member. For $5, you can get your name in the credits of these videos, as well as access to custom chat emojis and other fun perks. So if you want to be a member, hit the join button right now. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.